An unlikely political outsider is vying to represent Arizona in Congress. QAnon promoter and conspiracy theorist Ron Watkins announced his campaign for the first district seat last week. He'll run as a Republican fighting for a seat currently held by a Democrat. Now, many actually suspect Watkins is Q, the mysterious figure behind the QAnon conspiracy theory. He's also a leading promoter of what is often called the big lie, the disproven claim that the last presidential election was stolen from Donald Trump. So Dan Patterson is here to discuss this. Wow, Dan. Um, why is he running for office? Yeah, good to see you, Anne-Marie. Uh, so we should say at the outset uh, that it's not clear he even is running for office, even though he claims he is. Uh, he doesn't have a financial apparatus. Uh, he doesn't, it's not even clear that he lives in the state. He says he lives in the state, but I asked him several times, uh, not his specific address, but if he lives in the district that he's running to represent, and he failed to answer me. Um, so Watkins is known, like you said at the, the top of the segment, he's likely believed to have been Q, but he's known for being very, uh, look, just dishonest. Uh, he's on record at lying routinely. So it, it is possible that he's just using this as a publicity stunt. Uh, he's pretty good at those to raise his profile and to kind of uh, burnish his image a little bit, to uh, validate a lot of ideas and personalities that uh, were kind of uh, crawling under the rock and in the shadows and a little creepy. And maybe if he says he's running for Congress, it might validate that a little bit. So um, once again, Emory, we have no idea because there's no apparatus that we can look at. Of course. Um, so you and CBS News is uh, Jake Rosen actually spoke to Watkins. I want to play some of the sound from that interview where he perpetuated the lie that President Trump actually won the election. Let's play that sound. Trump is able to get out there and get the, and he is able to, uh, to uh, let everybody know exactly what is going on here. And uh, sure, uh, he may not have been certified in this past election. In fact, it's my belief that he won and that uh, Joe Biden uh, is, is just the resident of the White House. Okay, I have to say this. Uh, we know former President Trump did not win the 2020 election, right? There have been audits, there have been lawsuits. He did not win the 2020 election. Um, I'm kind of, so this is clearly a false statement, but sometimes I, I am of two minds when it comes to covering this sort of stuff because there's a little yeah. bit of concern that, you know, you put a microphone in front of this guy and he can say whatever he wants without any proof and it amplifies this message. I mean, is there a concern, and you sort of brought this up a little bit in your previous answer, that with him running for office, it's gonna give him a platform, a spotlight, a camera, a microphone, and an opportunity to amplify this message. Yeah, that's key, Emory. And look, we play that segment after analyzing uh, a very long interview, and we play it with a little apprehension because we want to avoid doing exactly what you pointed out very correctly there, Emory. We want to cover this, and we want to make sure that we are shining a spotlight on this and being as accurate as possible without amplifying disinformation, bad ideas, or validating um, people who are engaged in disseminating disinformation, uh, as Watkins is likely believed to have been doing. And it's pretty, um, look, this media blitz, and it's very likely him conducting this interview, uh, his intent was to amplify his image and to burnish his credentials a little bit. He wants to use us to make himself look uh, more reputable. In fact, he posted on his Telegram channel uh, where he has for months been uh, 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 amplifying and pushing conspiracies and the big lie notion that the election was stolen, the false notion the election was stolen. For months, he's been using his Telegram channel uh, to push that information. And he, in fact, uh, talked about this very interview on his Telegram channel over the weekend. So once again, Anne-Marie, I think you're exactly right. He is trying to use this interview and his media blitz because he did uh, a number of interviews with other organizations, although none on camera, last week uh, to make himself seem more credible. 
Mm-hmm. Um, we have seen conspiracy theorists r- run for um, various different positions. Mostly the campaign doesn't get very far, but it sounds like, you know, this guy's sort of like the grand heady of conspiracy theorists. Could this motivate others, other conspiracy theorists to run for office? Yeah, in fact, that that is likely um, a, another uh, motivation for him running for office. Uh, look, we asked him if he is in contact with former President Trump. He says no. We asked him if he's in contact uh, with Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and other uh, conspiratorial uh, or members of Congress who have uh, expressed conspiratorial uh, ideas. He says no. Uh, but this is, look, it, A metaphor, a weird metaphor here is that, look, a rising tide lifts all boats, and it is pretty likely that Ron Watkins wants to be kind of the climate change of disinformation political or candidates who like uh, or espouse disinformation. And he kind of wants to flood the world with candidates who uh, confuse uh, the political environment or or inject uh, false ideas about the state of democracy. Um, before I let you go, how is uh, Arizona's Republican Party responding to this? Have they said anything at all? Uh, yeah, the the party, uh, the local party and the national party say they don't comment on um, uh, particular candidates or at least this far out from elections. But we will continue to ask uh, the GOP uh, and Watkins uh, hard questions through the course of the campaign. All right, Dan, thank you very much. Good to see you.